Welcome to the Arlington Catholic Herald podcast. I'm Mary Stikaira Lopez, social media coordinator. Our March 28th issue is jam-packed with stories of healing. The Knights of Malta sponsored a Mass for the Sick at St. Ambrose Church in Annandale, and we also took a deeper look at the Sacrament of the Anointing of the Sick. Staff writer Zoe Murray is here to tell us about the story, and we'll learn more about the sacrament with an interview from a returning guest, Father Stefan Starzynski. But first, Zoe, can you take us through this week's headlines? Absolutely. Dr. George Delgado recently shared his story of creating an abortion pill reversal network at an event hosted by Divine Mercy Care, the education arm of Tepeyac OBGYN in Fairfax, and the talk was held at St. Veronica's Church. The abortion pill causes about 300,000 to 450,000 abortions every year, and many women regret taking them. Dr. Delgado said his network of physicians have documented more than 500 women who have given birth after successful mifepristone reversals. Also this week, check out our review of the new movie Unplanned. The movie shares the story of Abby Johnson, who quit her job at Planned Parenthood after seeing a baby struggling for his life during an abortion. Abby now works as a pro-life activist helping abortion workers find new jobs. You can read all these stories on CatholicHerald.com or in this week's print edition. And joining us today is Father Stefan Starzynski, chaplain of Inova Fairfax Hospital. If you're a regular reader, you may have seen him in some of our stories, or you may have heard him on the Arlington Catholic Herald or searching for more podcasts. Father, always a pleasure. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. So, Father, thanks so much for coming. So you actually had an emergency baptism, but otherwise you would have been at the Mass for the anointing of the sick on March 23rd. Yeah, as you might know, I'm the chaplain at Fairfax Hospital, and I say every day is an adventure at the hospital. You never know exactly what's going to come. Um, last, I believe the last three years, I was part of the anointing Mass at St. Ambrose Parish, um, and I was planning on being there, but then I got a call from a family nurse that there was an emergency baptism for a little baby, and they weren't sure about the condition of emergency baptism. And, and so I had to um, stay, and I baptized the baby. And then I have, I, I'm so beautifully able to say, would you like me to confirm the baby, too? So I actually confirmed the baby with Mary. I don't know exactly how the baby's doing right now, but I can tell you the baby was very sick. And so I did that baptism, I did that confirmation, and then I came back and I was able to enjoy the dinner or the lunch with, with, the, with the people at the parish. Awesome, and so what do, you, what do you enjoy about those healing masses? I love everything that has to do with healing. You know, Pope Benedict referred to Christianity as a therapeutic religion. And he even said that the, all of Christianity can be summed up in the word healing. You know, even the word salvation comes from the word salvo, which means to be healed. To be healed is to be made whole. So when we're redeemed, we are made whole. So from the very beginning, the lens that I've seen Christianity and Catholicism is Jesus as the divine physician. I've seen everything through the lens of of healing. And so does Pope Benedict. He said Christianity can be summed up in one word, healing. So you obviously do a lot of anointing of the sick in your job as hospital chaplain at Innova Fairfax. Um, What do you think are some common misconceptions about the sacrament? Well, first, let me give you some idea of how many anointings I actually do. I don't record every anointing, but I, last year, I, last three years, I've recorded at least 1,500. Wow. And I'm not writing the same name down twice, and that's not even all of them. Um, So I do a lot of anointings. Probably a misconception is um, sometimes people just think they they treat the the sacrament sometimes as magic. While it's important to anoint people, all the sacraments should not be seen through the lens of magic. In fact, there is a preface that says, Are there any sick among you? Then the call for the priests of the church. Let Let the priest pray over them with the prayer of faith, with the prayer of faith. And the prayer of faith will save the sick person. And even under the word save, it's the word salva, which could equally be translated healed. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick person. And if they've committed any sins, their sins will be forgiven them. So I think a misconception is sometimes we treat the sacraments like we treat any of the sacraments as kind of magic. And we forget that, that part as the prayer of faith will save the sick person. If they've committed any sins, the sins will be forgiven. Um, So I think 
a misconception is treating the sacraments as if, oh, we just have to have to get the person anointed, which is important, but it's also maybe as equally important that we approach the sacrament with, uh, with faith. And I think another misconception is I, it, the sacrament used to be called extra unction, which is the last rite. In fact, you know, the, I was re- rereading the catechism today, and it said last rites and anointing the sick are the same sacrament. Sometimes I will anoint somebody and they say, did they receive last rites? I say, yes. I say, there's a couple more prayers, like there's the apostolic pra- apostolic blessing, but they're essentially the same thing. Mm-hmm. And the catechism does say that if anointing is for healing, so how much more for that final Passover when somebody is about to die, right? But I think a misconception is we, we relate the sacrament of confession too much with, with death. In fact, the proper sacrament for those who are dying is viaticum. And if you are going to the bedside of somebody who's about to die, according to the rite in the anointing book, you might ask, what's the most important thing you need to do? And the rite actually says the most important thing to do is hear their confession. Hmm. Yeah. And, and it says even if the confession is generic, and then give them viaticum. And the word viaticum means to go with. It's to pass over, go with it. And if there's time, then anointing. What is a generic confession? That's a great question. Well, as you know, in the hospital, um, or in, any, in the hospital, if somebody is passing, um, a generic confession would be, are you sorry for your sins? Because sometimes there's like 20 nurses in the room. Not 20, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. 10. Doctors, family. And often the person is so unconscious. So a generic confession would be they don't have the wherewithal, the mental aptitude to really go through their life. Like squeeze my hand if you're sorry for your sins. Uh, so that would be the essence of a, a generic confession. But I think a, a misconception is that what the sacrament used to be called extra unction, which means the last rite. So we so connected with death. But in 19, I believe, 71 or 72, it was changed, the name was changed to anointing of the sick to bring it back to its original purpose. And its original purpose is healing. In fact, the rite even says that if somebody is really sick, it's way past the time where they should have been anointed. So it's, they, it took it more from connecting it with death and more connecting it with you know healing, right? And of course, it does say this, this illness has to be uh, have a, of a serious nature. You, know, you shouldn't be anointed just because you have a hangnail. And that could be a sure. misconception, too. I mean, there has to be some degree of illness, of, of a serious illness. And can you go through the steps of how you do anointing of the sick? Sure. As, so it's so funny because I'm mentally going through, every, like, all these times in my hospital. So there's so many different steps, right? Um, it can go anywhere from a half hour right, not a half hour, but you're with a person for a half hour, to, like, go to room 401, the person's about to go to emergency surgery. So you're literally going into the room as they are being sent off into, into surgery. So again, um, there's a preface. Actually, I like to say at the beginning, um, it's, it's, it's a word from scripture. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Whatever you ask my Father, I will do. I love, I just say that. And I like to even read the scripture, have faith in God. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, be uprooted and go in the sea and obey you. And when you stand praying, believe you received it and be yours. And if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them. Your Father in heaven will forgive you your sins. I say these things to kind of like spur faith. You know what I mean? Right. And then I read the preface, are there any sick among you? Let them send for the priests of the church. Let the priest pray over them with a prayer of faith. And the prayer of faith will save the sick person. And if they commit any sins, their sins will be forgiven. Then you read the rite. And you read, you have the oil, and the oil is, you could, the oil could either be blessed by the bishop at the chrism mass, or you can bring your own oil, which has to be olive oil. As you see, mostly I bring my own oil, because if I actually use the oil all the time from the chrism mass, they would have to have three chrism masses. <laughs> wow. Right? <laughs> I mean, so I, I and then you, you say this prayer, and just, just listen to this prayer that said, and, and listen to the words that has to do with healing. Because this is when I'm blessing the oil. God of all consolation, you chose, you chose and sent your son to heal the world. Graciously listen to our prayer of faith and to send the power of your Holy Spirit, the consoler, into this precious oil, 
this soothing ointment, this rich gift, this fruit of the earth. Bless this oil and sanctify of her use. Make this oil a remedy for all who are anointed with it. Heal them in body, soul, and in spirit. And deliver them from every affliction. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And in the old rite, you used to anoint the five senses. In the new rite, you can anoint, you just anoint the forehead and the, and the hands. And if interesting enough, you hit, anoint the palms. And if it's a priest, which actually I've come across maybe about two dozen priests, active and non-active priests, but you anoint them on the top of their hands because their hands are already anointed, mm. huh. which is interesting. Most people would not know that. Some priests don't even know that. Yeah. Now, Father, I know with 1,500 anointings a year, you've got to have some stories to share. Would you tell some? Yes. I mean, I, it seems like my mind's just kind of like going out so often. Well, it can the, the stories can be everything from, you know, when you, when you walk into a room, you know, sometimes people, everybody seems to be want to be anointed. Everybody want, wants to be anointed, or most people want to be blessed. Blessing seems to be this positive story. But, I mean, there's certainly stories of, um, okay, we'll go, we'll go from, like, last rites. I mean, like, the final thing. And you one, one of the purposes of last rites, or extra unction, is the final anointing. And I kind of use that, think of that image of Scripture. Remember, we, before Jesus was uh, died on the cross, he was anointed by Mary. Hmm. And nowhere in, the, nowhere in the right do they connect this to, but she was anointing him for his death. And I've always kind of saw that as an image. And so, and sometimes you, and one of the reasons why you give people last rites is because suffering can cause fear. The devil can kind of want to get you in discouragement and fear. You're afraid of that final Passover. And so, and you, part of the reason you anoint persons is to strengthen them, um, to offer up their sufferings to God, to strengthen them against the wiles of the devil. So some, some beautiful stories are people who are about to die. And I've heard they're the most beautiful confession in the world. And you, he, he had that image of like, you know, a holy death. And then, and I always, and I anoint them, and then they're, they're strengthened. And, and I always beautifully like to say, you know, when you, I, I think there's so many graces in the hospital. And I, I say to this person, when you get to heaven, Will you promise, when you see the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, and Jesus, will you promise the first thing you do in heaven is to say a prayer for me in thanksgiving mm. for this anointing? Wow. And, and they say that they will. And just imagine, this is three, three to four times a day. Yeah. Because on this side of the grave, they may not realize it. And it's interesting enough, because I anointed this man just recently, and I saw, I saw a priest, and I asked the man to pray for me in the, these last hours. And he said that, that me asking him actually moved him to want to come back to the church. Mm-hmm. Why? Because the dignity of having a priest say to pray for me. Wow. And he came back. So that was, that's very touching. And, and I've seen some beautiful, like, this healings, you know, like you. Um, what the Lord is bringing out to me is that all is grace. And by being all grace, sometimes you just, you and I'll anoint somebody and um, he kind of a kind of a beautiful story. Just this recently, I was in a room, and I saw I was anointed this man. It was the middle of the night, and I saw actually a burst of light over his body, globe a burst of light is over his body, and I saw it, and and the, the son saw it, and then he's like, "Where did that come from?" And and he said, "Did it come from outside?" This is like maybe in the sixth floor of the hospital. I knew that it wasn't from outside. Then it happened again over his body, and then I came in the next day to the hospital and. Um, the, the nurse said, can I pull me aside? says, can you, I'd like to talk to you about Mr. So-and-so. And usually when a nurse is pulling you aside, it's usually not about something good. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Before right, you go right. in, right? It's yeah. not usually the way it works. Just after you anointed him, he got better. Wow. So um, because I've always believed in healing, and also too, I think, you know, I always like, I believe, I mean, I don't know how true this is, but I believe in kind of the 10,000 hour rule too. You know, the 10,000, to be really good, you have to do something for 10,000 hours. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I'm, I'm putting in 2,300 hours a year in the hospital. That's a lot of volunteer work, 2,300 hours a year. And so I think if just by the numbers of people that you anoint, and then I get messages weekly. 
you know, you came in and you anointed this person and, and they, they, they got better. And I, I hear that regularly. So just so, in fact, a, a person just came to visit me from three years ago. And he, this man had a heart attack. Um, he had a heart attack in the hospital. He's from another city. Of course, they brought him to Fairfax. And that's where I got that scripture, have faith in God, like the mustard seed. And he wasn't given much of a chance. And now, and, that, and then after all that, they didn't think he could even like maybe talk or even walk. And guess what? So, you know, you, so you, you see this stepping out in faith. And I've realized that, and again, the, one of the, and let me share with you the purpose of the sacrament. The purpose of the sacrament is, as it says in the, in the, the guidelines in the preface, healing might occur if it's for the benefit of the soul, right? If it's for the benefit of the soul. It might occur if it's for the benefit of the soul, right? So it doesn't happen all the time, or, or even every time, or even most of the times, right? Right. But, but I do think with what I'm trying to do at the hospital is bring up a little bit more faith, spark a little bit more faith. Because I think, you know, the church gives us, you know, there's three sacraments of initiation, baptism, confirmation, first holy communion. Tri- there's three, trinity. I didn't realize there's also a trinity as we go out. Mm-hmm. There is confession, viaticum, Eucharist, and anointing. So, so this idea of this is, is healing and just, start, just, just bringing out a little bit of, of faith, that's what I'm trying to do. Just have people just have a little bit more faith. You know, Padre Pio, pray, hope, and don't worry. <laughs> worry is useless. God loves you. And then Pope Francis says, you know, every prayer is, is heard. Yeah, recently we ran a video on the Catholic Herald YouTube channel that was produced by Catholic News Service, but it, it talked about your life as a chaplain. It was a really good video. We're going to play a quick clip from that. Every day in the hospital is an adventure. Like things that I might have done as a priest once every month, I do three times a day here, like baptizing a sick baby, being at the bedside of somebody who was about to die. And when I mean about to die, I don't mean like next month. I mean like go to room 401, the person is is dying right now. One of the things that struck me about the video was when you talked about the power of hope in life or death situations. Can you tell us about that? Yes, I was asked to go into the office of one of the great doctors at Fairfax. I kind of call him like like the LeBron James. (laughs) And what I mean by that is like Fairfax is a top 10 hospital in the United States for heart. And this doctor is the doctor, one of the doctors. In fact, people say he almost has as much say. I mean, he, he has very few peers in the world. And he's not Catholic. But he wanted, invited me into his room, his office, to bless his office. Why? Because he saw something in the operating room after an anointing. Oh, wow. Something that amazed him. And it's a great story. And, and it might be, seem unbelievable to say wow. the story, but this is this doctor who knows what the, all this stuff means, right? And why is he inviting me in? Because he saw it. And he sees the power of faith. Mm-hmm. So he brings me in, and um, I'm blessing his office. And, and he, he shares his experience. And his experience is, he says, he looks at this medical evidence and just look at the medical, the biological, the facts, and says, this person ought to live. Everything points wow. that they ought to live. And he says, they end up dying. This person ought mm-hmm. to die. And they end up living as if... And he's just looking at the biological as if, again, if our, when our, our outlook on faith actually determine its most important ingredient, component, whether or not we live or die. And he said, this doesn't happen just occasionally. <laughs> he says, this happens all the time. And to me, that was so beautiful because it's that power of our outlook on life to heal, right? It's a, it's a power of faith. To, you don't have to call it faith. You can just call it outlook on life, right? But there has to be a reason why you want to get out of bed, right. right? There has to be a reason, like a mother that has three kids. You know, you know, you know. One of the saddest parts is when a mother with three kids with cancer dies. That, that always, I mean, how can you not that break your heart? Mm-hmm. How can it not break your heart when a baby passes away? These are things we can never understand, right? And we're not saying you know our outlook is everything, but sure. we but we are saying that um, 
that our outlook on faith seems to be, according to this doctor, and, I, and it's been my experience, seems to be like the single greatest uh, factor on whether or not we live or die. That's remarkable. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you, Father, for joining us. And you can find inspiring stories in the Catholic Herald every week. Subscribe today by emailing circulation at catholicherald.com. Thanks to George Goss and Zita Fletcher for producing this podcast. Mm-hmm.